Cherry chocolate rain. Some stage drivers feel the pain. Cherry chocolate rain. He moves his mouth away from the mic to breathe. What <laughs> makes <laughs> that version of chocolate rain different to the original chocolate rain? Like, is it just cherry chocolate um, it rain? Was a, it was a promotion that they did with cherry cola. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Have you not seen the video? <laughs> no, I've never yeah, seen it. Like, he's dressed like a pimp. And he's got loads of ladies around him. And he's like, cherry chocolate rain. And then um, there's this like, rapper going like, he moves his mouth away from the mic so he can breathe. <laughs> Capitalism is like a scourge on society, isn't it? It really is like... Yeah, yeah. Take something from the internet. I mean, and if, only, if only... Uh, socialism, you wouldn't get any cherry chocolate rain, would you? So, you know. No, not at all. Oh, yes, you would. Yes, you would. You'd get cherry chocolate rain, would you? Yeah. It's that just the people, would, the people would, you know, demand it and uh, work together to create cherry chocolate rain. Really? Really? Yeah. You filthy communist. <laughs> <laughs> and He's gone proud. red, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, oh, oh. It seems like we're finishing each other's Sandwiches. Cocks. Oh. <laughs> See, I went for a, I went for a frozen PG reference, and you went for, went for Leisure Suit Larry. Full Fabio's XXX explicity. <laughs> Did you hear that, Chris? Um, no, I didn't actually. Um, yeah, yeah, what? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, what? what was that? Hello. <gasps> Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the Full Fat Podcast, where every week we shoot the shit and, you know, we spit some bars and, um, you know, we just show that we're the whitest men in South East London. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm joined as ever by my co-host, Chris Fussell, and uh, we're going to be breaking down kind of what we saw this week, what we consumed, maybe a bit of Docky Who, and uh, we're joined this week by a returning guest, Ooh. the first ever returning oh guest. Oh my goodness. And, and the first ever guest. Um, oh. Mr. Harry Bag. Hello there. <laughs> General Kenobi. <laughs> you are a bag one. You are a bag one. <laughs> you, you you had nothing, did you, Harry? No, I had nothing. I had nothing. I, you know, I'm out all out of spunk today. <laughs> so what have you... Um, um, such spunk. What, what, what have you been watching this week, Harry? Why don't, why don't you kick us off? Uh, well... Great segue, Chris. Great segue because the only thing I've watched this week, as far as I'm aware, of, as far as I can remember, is oh, Doctor wait, Who. Uh, Zibit, Zibit, Exhibit A. Would you like a cycle on my zipple? Um, you're gonna say Doctor Who, aren't you? Maybe. I just, I just don't want us to to premature doculation. Shouldn't we leave that to the end of the podcast? What do you think, Chris? We can do it now if you want. We can do it first. We usually go through it's what anarchy, we've seen, don't isn't we? Isn't it? I mean, I've not actually really seen anything else this week, really, either, in all honesty. I'm racking my brains. Mm. Uh, well, we watched Love is Blind, didn't we? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a video coming out on that, so I don't really want to spoil too much of the content of uh, <laughs> Love is Blind. It's, it, it's probably already out. Um, That's true. Um, okay, uh, wait, let me just check uh, Mr. Letterbox. You saw, oh, you I, saw Invisible Man this week. Don't tell me what I saw. <laughs> uh, what did you see, sorry? I saw Invisible Man, actually. Uh, oh shock! Wow. I did not know that information. <laughs> um, yeah, it was um, it was utterly fantastic. Lee Winnell was knocked out of the park once again. Uh, for those of you who've seen Upgrade, great man. sorry, what? <laughs> great man, <laughs> <laughs> outstanding man. He's a great, great man. He sounds like we're part of like a Lee Winnell cult. He's a great we man, are. a visionary. Um, yeah, yeah. If 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 someone was like, "Do you want to join the Jared Leto cult or the Lee Winnell cult?" I'd join the Jared. <laughs> no, I joined the Lee Winnell cult. Well, it's a close or would one. I join the Jared Leto it's a close cult? One. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Lee Winnell has never released a song that goes "The Pariah, The Sedalia, This Is Wrong." <laughs> uh, so it's no contest really, um, but he does make fantastic, fantastic movies. They've they've retooled Invisible Man, um, and rather going rather than going down like a supernatural route um you know my, kind of minor spoilers i'm not sure how much of it is sort of showing the trailer but it's, it's more tech based um and it kind of comes from the angle of um like domestic abuse so um the main character played by elizabeth moss um she was in an abusive relationship and then that's the, he's the invisible man of the title and she kind of thinks he's dead but then he comes back to haunt her so what, what you're saying is is he's dead <laughs> he's not dead yeah that, that's pretty much the plot he's dead no well um oh, 
that a bit of a spoiler there. Um, because of your office reference. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, actually, interestingly enough, um, the film's kind of been criticised, not the film itself, but its marketing. Um, because some of the things that I... I've not seen the film, but I've seen people all over Twitter complaining that the trailer spoils like large portions of the film. Oh, really? In advance, yeah. Oh, really? um, it's one oh, of them okay. where like they give away quite a bit... Um, and stuff like in the trailer you can see she gets sent to like a mental asylum and things like that oh, and it shows really you annoying. how the yeah it shows you how the whole film plays out across the trailer it's one of them annoying trailers where for some reason I mean at the same time we've, we've spoiled it for the listeners if they didn't know uh, My, minor true. spoilers <laughs> Minor spoilers for Invisible Man, but nothing that you won't have had spoiled in the trailers. Um, that's a real shame because I I did watch the trailer, but you know when you kind of you watch it and then it's been some time before you go to see the yeah, movie. Yeah, no, same. Yeah, so I so I I'd forgotten the specifics, and um, it's really neat the way she ends up having to like go to a mental institution because obviously her saying, "Oh, it's my ex boyfriend. He's trying to kill me," and you know, everyone thinks he's dead and he's obviously invisible whenever she sort of gives examples. Everyone's like, you're going crazy. Um, and then she kind of gets framed for something and, you know, she's trying to prove he's not dead, basically. It's a really interesting way to do it. Um, and I, I, I absolutely adored it. Some of the tension in it is awesome. Although I will say, um, and uh, the person I saw it with, Terry, can attest to this, uh, there was these little shits at the back of the cinema, right? They would not shut the fuck up, right? And, um, they were, like, she thought they were probably, like, 13, 14. I think they were at least 17, 18, right? They were big lads. <laughs> and uh, were, you, were you scared of them? Was that why? No, I wasn't scared of them. There was four of them, and um, they kept chatting really loudly. And then I, I, you have to eventually get up, don't you? So I walked up to the, the back, and I was like... Can you keep it down, please? And then, like, rather than being, you know, exemplary citizens, they were like, it's no big deal, it's no big deal. So I had to have, like, a bit of a back and forth with them, like, can you just shut the fuck up, basically? Um, and that went on for, like, a couple of minutes. And then they were quiet, got, went back down. They were quiet for, like, a good ten minutes. And I thought, oh, they've actually they've actually heeded my voice. Then they started making fart noises, right? <laughs> no, but this is how you know. It sounds juicier than the movie. Well, they were, they were, they were giving it large a little bit, um... And like they were saying things like, oh, go and get security, then go and get security. And I was like, I don't, I'm not going to go get security. I just want you to be quiet. Right? So was this whilst the film was actually... Yeah, whilst the film was on, yeah. So all the people could hear this? Um, well, that was the thing. It it was kind of a busy screening, but because it was in um, the Leicester Square cinema, or the IMAX screening, uh, it's so big that it was kind of spaced out. So it was like me and this one other guy who was sat on the other side of them that sort of like had a go at them. But everyone else was kind of like clustered on the other side of the cinema. So it was only really us... They had to fucking endure this. Um, but yeah, but I... Uh, yeah, they started making fart noises. And um, obviously I'd already told them to be quiet once. I didn't want to go get security. Then Terry went to go get security. And this is how you know these guys aren't hard, right? What hard kids do you remember from school would see someone going to get security? And then they got up, right? And walked to the other side of the screen. So they didn't leave. They just like hid from security. Oh, and then the security came up. And, like, basically just stood by them for, like, half an hour. And they didn't say a word. And then he left. And then about ten minutes after that, they then left, like, silently. So how old were they? You said... They were, they were like, teenagers. Yeah, but they were, like... They thought they were... They thought they were hard, basically. Mm. But I'm here to tell... I, I should have been to them, like, you know who I am? I thought that video. I would have been like, oh, fuck. Sure, they're they're real, even, even bigger nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit, a bit of the, uh, bit of the welling came out of me uh, during that exchange. But, um... But yeah, <laughs> I just said to him, I'm not afraid to punch a kid. <laughs> oh, well, that would have gone down like a treat, wouldn't it? Then they'd have called security on you, and rightfully yeah. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I would have been like the Invisible Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take exact revenge on them. <laughs> you make them listen to this podcast, and then they'll be sorry. Yeah, <laughs> little cunts. Um, <laughs> I can say the C-word, can't I? I can say cunt. Yes, you can. I can say cunt, can't I? Oh, damn. Cunt. I'm going to say that, can't I, Chris? Yes. yes can you, you say can. it too? <laughs> no. no Why I'm not? not? I'm all right. Is it because your mum and dad listen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Graham and Carol, I apologise for using the C word. Thank Apparently. you very much. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, ha- Harry Bag put me up to it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, cunt. <laughs> oh! Ooh! <laughs> Harry, do you want me to escort you out of it? 
<laughs> Please don't. Sammy's going to be big for their booties. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get security to sit next to him. For a of <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, but yeah, it's been a quiet week for me for uh, actually watching just because we've been yeah, trying so, to... Um, I mean, the only thing is Love is Blind, but as I say, I don't really want to talk too much about that because um, a video on it will be out soon. But suffice to say, like it is uh, one of the biggest car crash reality TV shows I've ever seen, but kind of a good car crash. Like it's so mm. such a blend of disparate ideas and genres, and yet it somehow becomes really captivating. I think basically by the sort of naivety of the contestants. But you, you know, I don't I don't really want to go into it too much, just because as I say, most of this will be discussing in the video. But yeah. Um, it, I think it's been. I think it's bizarre to me that it was filmed in 2018 and is only just out now. But uh, Netflix works in mysterious ways. That so. is weird because, like, even if the couple's got married, there's been a lot of time in between there where it could have all gone tits up. Would you like to know something interesting? Actually, go on. One of the couples. Wait, 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 wait. Minor spoilers, you guys. For oh, it's not even. A, it's not even. A, it's. I had to put this. <laughs> I can be vague because it's obvious from even the first episode that this will happen. One of the couples. That like left at the altar. That's in the super trailer, like at the yeah, end of the first yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. So one of the couples that left at the altar have got back together. Oh, and they're still together. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, and like I, really? I, I have no idea why on earth they would do that, but uh, <clears throat> there you go. Well, we actually have the first couple on as guests today. Um, guys, what um, what made you want to stay together? Oh, they're a bit shy, ladies and gentlemen. We'll we'll, we'll ask them again in a minute. They might, they might say something. Come on, go on. I mean, I think we've, I, I think we've got to. Uh... Oh, I forgot we've got them tied up. <laughs> Gagged and bound. <laughs> <coughs> Let me just take that off. <laughs> I think. Um, I we think so alarmed. <laughs> Should be happy to be here. <laughs> I think I think uh, we're delaying the inevitable here. I think we should like di- deep dive right into Doctor Who because I think we've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. And I feel like we're okay. just putting off doing it for the sake of putting off doing it. All right. Um, <laughs> well, should we get Harry, Mr. Harry Funny Man to kick us off? Harry, the timeless child, what up with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. I, I'm 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 not on the same page as you guys. Oh. I was a bit fifty fifty on it. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I, yeah, I'm very 50-50 on it. I'd be interested to hear when you say what you guys think. When you yeah. say you're 50-50 on it, do you mean just the reveal, or do you mean the whole episode? The whole episode, the reveal, uh, the whole episode, the reveal, all of it, really. Um, for me, the first, like, 40 minutes of it, I did enjoy, despite what was revealed. Um, I did have a good time watching the episode. Mm. However, the impact this may have on the show is quite worrying for me. Um, I'm very glad that Chip Nor has finally uh, pulled the trigger and done something with the show, but at the same time, yeah, I'm interested to see how this will impact the future of the yeah. show. It almost feels like he heard us all complaining that the last series was hollow and nothing happened. He was like, "All right, then, you little shits, I'm gonna <laughs> do something so earth-shatteringly yes. yeah. bad." <laughs> I mean, before we deep dive, and again, a spoiler warning because we're gonna go oh, yeah. absolutely in on um, this. <laughs> I, I've got to say that, um, like, full disclosure. I think, I mean, if, if it wasn't clear from Harry, um, obviously he has slightly different views to us. Um, both of us are pretty unified in that we didn't really enjoy it. Um, I think it's one of the weakest finales of the entire show. And I'm quite concerned Ooh. that it honestly ruined the season. It reminds me of Name of the Doctor. Um, and before we deep it, like, uh, talk about the kind of the future of the show going forward from this, I think for me, my biggest problem with it, just straight out the gate, is it doesn't feel like it's really a story. Much like Name of the Doctor, it feels like an mm. excuse to just dump exposition after exposition after exposition without actually having a narrative you know you have this backdrop this awesome backdrop of the cyber war you have this backdrop with ashad and all these interesting things and really what it amounts to is all that kind of just goes away very quickly the master just makes all these huge threats that we set up seem minuscule but then all the master really does is spend the episode spouting exposition which was my biggest fear and i said that last week this episode basically amounts to the master spending 50 minutes going it's nearly time to find out everything doctor the time has nearly come and then he just monologues for like 10 minutes about some lore and the Doctor goes, oh my god, and then the Doctor immediately just defeats the Master. There's no, not really a story. It's all kind of structured around that cheap shock of the twist, isn't it? But the thing it is... Like everything was leading up to that. Yeah. So you could be like, oh my god. But, but it wasn't no, really like, a good twist though, was it? Like, how many of you did you did you think it was going to be the Doctor, the Timeless Child? Or... Um, well, that, that's, that, that's kind of my problem with it. Is, the, is, it wasn't you know, really good... shocking, was it? When no, it, no. It was like, oh, well... 
and I think a good story should always you should you should start to build up theories about what's happening along a narrative and a good story will shock you by thinking of something that you didn't think of you know the story should always kind of be smarter than you and the thing yeah. that really disappointed me about this was you know we all kind of had in our minds oh the doctor might be the timeless child and it felt like the most stale yeah. lazy thing that could have happened and then it did happen and it wasn't shocking was it, it was almost only shocking. like ray palpatine or something it's exactly like ray palpatine because it gives significance to a character from birth doesn't it it, it's, it becomes less about what they do and how their actions define them and it becomes more about that they were this chosen one or they were always born to be special you know the thing that i have always loved about doctor who is by his own standards his or her own standards on their home planet they were just like any other time lord <clears throat> and then they decided one day you know enough is enough i want to go out and venture the stars yeah and they stole a tardis and the tardis stole them and they started this incredible relationship where they went through the cosmos and they and they picked up companions that they met along the way and they saved the universe and it was through the doctor's good deeds and their will and their bravery that they created this legend about themselves whereas now what we have is oh actually they were always born to be legendary because they came from this other dimensional portal and they're not even really Gallifreyan. And not only that, the fact that they're ground zero of regeneration, just like, what do any of these twists give you in terms of posing interesting questions about the show? I, I think that's the, the thing on what, what you said. It's a weird sort of... It's a weird sort of middle ground between what you say and that a good twist should be unpredictable. But at the same time, a good twist should be grounded in logic that you've brought before. Yeah. So up until this point, we've had no... I mean, you can say you've had the hint in the form of the flashback, mm. but let's face it, all we've heard is this word, the timeless child. And then what happens? Out of the master's arse, we get... <laughs> Tession. <laughs> what are they called? Oh, Tection. Right, so so that's the first thing we learned. This Tection person ventured out into the stars, right? So all that we really have here is instead of Rassilon and Omega, it was someone else. Great, but it's the same it's the same fucking thing anyway, mm. right? There's been no ground laid for this person. So that's just a made up word. Like I could just literally go, uh Vadon Badonk uh ventured into the Quaro <laughs> and became the Gazorp. And like, you know, it's like Rick and Morty. Mate, you should write that down. It's just Rick and <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Like it's just There's it's just made, So we've got we've got made up words that have no basis for anything. Yeah. Then it moves and we go and then she put this child, and there's no, there's no nothing, there's nothing from that that kind of comes from anywhere. Like it's, it's the, it's the equivalent of the master just going, "Hey, you know, this is why this is really unguessable because there is absolutely no basis for anything that we hear in story. You might as well have gone a long time ago. Gallifreyans were cats, and then a dog <laughs> came. Like it's yeah. got the same <laughs> basis of nothing. And yeah. again, it just replaces things that we already sort of know with new words." Doesn't it? But it's, that, it's like, it's, like it's, what were they called? The Shomblies or some crap. The yeah. Gather Time Lords now. Although, admittedly, I cannot remember the name of that off the top of my head. It was the Shirt Shibogans or something. Shibogans. That is actually mentioned in Hellbent as an aside to do with the sort of the plebeian class on Gallifrey. Oh, really? So that is not that is not a Chibnall invention. That part. But really, what it what it really amounts to is he's made something up on the spot that no one could have predicted, quote unquote. But that's not clever because if you don't seed something in. And allow the audience yeah. to have some degree of guessability. You've just made something up. Right? I just, I just, I don't understand this, Chibnall, because it's such a convoluted answer to add in all this backstory pre Hartnell that she was the timeless child. She's the product of um, this other dimension, this portal, and we don't know her origins. We didn't know her origins anyway. Like so. We're just adding more mystery. And also, she's the original creature that could regenerate, and then they stole regeneration from her. So it's like adding even more significance to the Doctor than there already is within Gallifreyan society. Because the Doctor is already significant in the fact that they became the last of the Time Lords. They ended the Time War. Every Gallifreyan, you know, if they came back for that bubble universe, would know the Doctor's name by now, wouldn't they? Because they've become a legend, and they know them through their travels. So you don't need to then add on top of that that also... Um, oh, th this is what I also don't like about it. So they extracted regeneration from her, right? Mm. If you're the Time Lords, you're already a bunch of evil so-and-sos, aren't you? Yeah. Why would you let her grow up on Gallifrey as a normal person? You'd keep her locked away, wouldn't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't leave any room for chance that she could 
steal a TARDIS and run away, would you? But this is mm. this is what I find so perplexing about it because it's very easy way. I don't think the concept of this is this is the thing I just want to make clear, and I think we're all pretty much agreed on this. I don't think the concept of there was a being that they randomly found, inject took this thing from them, and then claimed this grand fake legacy to make themselves seem more great than they were when actually they stole something from someone else is necessarily a bad idea. Do you know what I mean? No. It's, it's just, it's just, it's classic. You know, they, it's got, it's you know, got a colonial sort of feeling to it in the sense that you know this grand aristocracy, rather than coming up with this incredible power or, or having it naturally, they took it from uh, indigenous people, didn't they? And then, and then they they used it for their own ends, and and, and they also hid the origin of it you know they don't credit the timeless child with regeneration they credit yeah. themselves so that's interesting that's that's interesting yeah. we already know the time lords are bad what would interest me more is the doctor finding this out and being troubled by this what could also be interesting is if you found out that the doctor themselves you could even establish these previous regenerations a bit like they did with the war doctor i don't think this is incredible i'm just saying it's better in my opinion Maybe the Doctor was involved in extracting this thing mm. and they were so horrified by what they did that they wiped their own memory and erased yeah, it. There's so many yeah. different avenues yeah. to use this initial concept and do what I think this is lacking is tell us something new about a character we already know. But instead, we only get a surface level thing. This is just, this is as I say, this is just making something up. It, by the same token, we could just write in if we were running the show afterwards. But then before the timeless child, this thing happened. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's what Ryan Johnson said about Star Wars backstory doesn't equal character no they're two different things it's frustrating as well because I think there's so much to chew on that could provide interesting narrative questions I mean it's like what I was saying to you the other day um, if it did turn out that regeneration was stolen as per that rumour which now we know is true wouldn't that change your feeling as a Gallifreyan about regeneration if I so if I had the ability to regenerate and I'm the Doctor or the Master and I know that it was stolen, it was born out of blood, that this refugee was tortured so that I have the privilege to prolong my life and regenerate, would I not suddenly start thinking, do I have the right to regenerate? Next time I've got this life or death situation, and especially a character like the Doctor who is such a paragon of goodness, would they not have this moral conundrum to be like, well, yeah. should I regenerate at all? And that would have been so interesting. But instead... Well, they might play with that idea in the future. But no, but, but, but because that, she is the time of child, she owns about. it, doesn't she? Yeah. So, so so there's no moral question there because it's like, it is rightfully hers. <laughs> Maybe that would be a moral question for the Master, but I can't see the Master... Ever being ever doing anything other than to save his own skin? We've obviously a, tr a few choice exceptions like standing with the Doctor, um, and and it could it could have been interesting as well in the sense that say there was that debate, maybe the Doctor could have been like, no, I don't think I should regenerate anymore. I don't think it's morally right, and the Master could have been like, well, I think it is morally right because uh, you know we've been given this ability now, and then, and then it kind of brings up that question of you know the things that you're given no matter where they came from and the fact that, you know, it was your parents or, or, or the people that look after, look after you, it's their fault if anything wrong happens to get there. Is it your fault? You know, do, do, yeah. do the sins of the father matter to you? Um, that could have been interesting, but no. We, we instead, <laughs> instead, it's just like, you're the timeless child. Like, it turns out you're even more infinitely interesting than you already were and woo and... And at the same time, nothing changes because the roof doctor's just like, well, you're still the doctor. And she's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I think that's my one of my big issues with it is it's almost like it's resolved within about 15 minutes. Obviously, they're going to do some more plot stuff like, oh, I'm sure we'll find out what the division is along the line and all this stuff. Do you think so, though? Because I was saying to someone today who also watched it and similarly didn't like it, they felt like the next season will get a bit more texture on the time of the child. But I'm not convinced because... It felt like it kind of tied itself up with Ruth yeah, saying it doesn't so, matter. Yeah, uh, I'm. I feel like they they'll just maybe. I feel like they'll just maybe come back to it maybe in the opening episode and then maybe the end again. Uh, I don't feel like it will be a reoccurring a bit like a light arc. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to keep coming back. It feels like this was rather than the arc going across multiple seasons. That's possibly just the arc for this season, and then yeah. Oh, hey, do you remember that time when I found out that like. I was tortured on Gallifrey and that yeah. regeneration comes specifically from me. I just hate that so much. Do you, know what's, <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what's really weird to me on a slight tangent, but yeah. still relevant? Right. So series 11, series 11 had no leaks. It had no leaks. Mm. The only thing that was semi-rumoured 
was that the Daleks were back in the New Year special. Yeah. And let's be honest, that's the kind of thing that you could just kind of like, not guess, but you could, how do I put this? I could go online and write, the Daleks are in the Christmas special. And the odds of it being right are fairly high, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, 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 you could make that up. Or you could say, the Daleks are in the series finale. You could I'm make pretty sure yeah. I could get you to say a monster on the spot and there'd be a good chance they're coming back next year. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sea Devils. Sontarans. Cybermen? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to have to play this back when Series 13 comes out or when they announce they're returning monsters to see who, who's on the money. You know, you could, you could, you know, you, you know. I'm saying there's, there's, there's kind of those spitball predictions. The Daleks are back. That's the kind of prediction you can just randomly make. But series eleven, let's face it, had next to no links. Okay, this series, I can't think of a series of Doctor Who, honestly, that has had more stuff this important mm. leaked. The Master leaked. The, the finale leak, the concept leak, the Jadoon episode not being about the Jadoon yeah. leak. Everything, the, the the Victorian Mary Shelley Frankenstein thing was picked up by the Daily Mirror. This, this wasn't even leaked like, oh, in the recesses of the internet. These, this was in like the Daily Mirror. Yeah. The, the, the Daily Mirror ran the story about the Doctor having 13 previous regenerations. Yes, it was slightly wrong, but they ran that and yeah. they said it, she'd had a memory erase and all this stuff. And it, 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 it was accurate. And honestly, not since Name of the Doctor got accidentally shipped out on DVD a week early which is with everyone knowing what happened in Name of the Doctor, mm. has there genuinely been a series of Doctor Who that I can think of that genuinely has had so many leaks? And that includes when Series 3, when someone put a year before it aired after the trailer, and not a year before it aired, a few months before it aired after the trailer, Mr. Saxon is the master, and Derek Jacobi is also the master. Oh, really? And yeah, that was leaked. Oh, that is, that's probably the worst leak that ever happened. How far before the series came out, sorry? Um, around time of trailer, <laughs> Saxon was leaked onto the internet. Right. Um, and the series, the series 10 master reveal in Wood Nothing Time was leaked, which is why the BBC ultimately announced yeah. the master was back. But... Neither of those things, I would say, like bi- neither of those things are as bad to me as something this important mm. leaking. Do you know what I mean? Like this is this is insane. The the amount of information that's come out from the great man, and it just makes me question: Was this because uh, Chibnall clearly was able to maintain spoilers better than Moffat? Clearly, evidently. But do because- you think that's just because, quite honestly, what was there to spoil about last season? But what what's, what 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 big earth-shattering stuff happened last season that anyone cares about like if you got told that tim shaw was the returning villain in the finale would that be enough to print in the sun it wouldn't would it whereas <laughs> 13 doctors before hartnell that's enough to print but i'm saying i'm saying that this didn't even make it onto like forums and stuff like that the series mm. was so locked down and it's odd to me like were they more a bit like oh maybe we can drill up a bit of backhand publicity by being a bit less cautious on yeah. leaks and stuff like that. It just intrigues me. I'm not saying it's true. It just. Well, I mean, the whole me. thing's had a whiff of desperation, hasn't it? Like every single week on social media, the official Doctor Who pages. As soon as the episode airs, they're like, something, something about the new twist or revelation that happened. Did you guys yeah. see this? It's like, why are you so desperate to get all the spoilers out there? It's like you. It's like you're aware of the fact well, that less and less people are not only watching it but giving a shit. And now you're like, the the, the, the desperation in trying to get people back. It, it just makes it seem worse. <laughs> Than it is. <laughs> the strangest thing to me was after Can You Hear Me, they released a trailer for like the fine finale. Yeah. So it's just a bit like, disregard this episode next week. Obviously, it was a quasi free parter, but it's still interesting to me. And um, I'll tell you what, the only other leak that was as bad as this was when Series 8, the first five scripts, and those black and white episodes came onto the internet. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. That's pretty that's, mental looking uh, back on it, isn't it? But that happened, yeah. But other than that, I honestly can't think of a worse leak in the show's history. And it's mental to me because, you know. What I find so funny about this is that when Didn't that timeless they, um... child rumor came up, we all it sounded fanfic. I was like, ah, oh, that's yeah. some bullshit. The mirror's made up, and yet here we fucking are. Didn't <laughs> they? Um, didn't they ship? The series seven DVDs with name of the Doctor on it before it aired. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, that was a, but that's only one episode. And oh, interestingly enough, <clears> you <throat> can still find those um, series eight leak things. The version of Listen that doesn't have the VFX work, so you don't see like things like the monster in the background, mm. is infinitely creepier. Because you just keep seeing the Doctor being like, it's behind us, and there's like nothing there. <laughs> but that's the theme of the episode, right? That the monster may or may not exist. So it's actually, as funny as it sounds, it's actually invariably creepier because you're just sort of looking at it like, the Doctor's gone a bit mental here. <laughs> but in like a good way, because it's Peter Capaldi being like, I'm, I'm selling it like it's funny, yeah. but genuinely you watch it, it's more scary. Because you're just like, is the Doctor just like, seen up? Yeah. yeah, has he just gone off his, or has he just gone so mad and bored yeah. that he's just invented this adventure for them? And it's, it, it's weirdly better. And it's in black and white, it really adds to the tone. <laughs> I just don't really understand. From the people that I've seen, kind of like half the Twitter reactions that liked 
last night's episode. And I'm not saying if you liked it, you're wrong. You know, like if you liked it, more power to you, whatever. Um, but coming from someone who who didn't like it, I, I just don't understand what you liked about it because, yeah, you might. The, the Morbius Doctors might be canon now, and yeah, you could argue, like, all these disparate Doctors, like the Shalka Doctor, could arguably be canon now, but what does that bring to the overarching narrative? What does it tell us about the Doctor the companions? Yeah, like, the, the most interesting stuff should always be happening in the now. What does it... What does it bring to the relationships that are at play on the current TARDIS team? What does it? What does it? What does it give us for next season? What's the conflict? Well, I think the thing I'm most positive about is potentially uh, more interactions with other Doctors. That's what I'm. But it's weird because, like, what? What's? What's? What are we saying now that there's an infinite amount of Doctors? It's in a the weird past. one, yeah. And it just it just doesn't make sense on the level of like, why does Roof have a police box TARDIS? And why did she go by the doctor? And and, and why why all these things? You know what I mean, like, wh- wh- and why did she use a gun? Like, what? Like, why is there this kind of doctor pre Hartnell that has kind of the iconography, but also uses a gun? And like, when did they decide not to use weapons? Like, where, like, where does that? Where where do the pre Hartnell doctors fit in in terms of them becoming the doctor today? I mean, I was saying to Harry earlier. Um, there is a way to kind of circumvent the Doctor being the tar- Time's Child very easily. Obviously, there are pre-regenerations. But there is a bit of a weird logical inconsistency in this episode in that you see all this stuff come up with the Doctor from the Matrix. So you know the Time's Child is the origin of Gallifrey because it's all visible in the Matrix, etc. Mm. Mm. But the actual reveal of the Master going, the Time's Child is you, there's no image to confirm that, right? And then immediately afterwards, the, the Master's like, that's all I have access to because everything was erased. So how did the Master actually come to the conclusion... <coughs> How did the Master actually come to the conclusion that the Doctor's the Time's Child? Now, I'm not being like, that's a plot hole. What I'm more saying is, that does give you some leeway to go, hang on a minute, maybe there was a Doctor before, mm. maybe the Master said they were the Time's Child to mess with them, maybe the Doctor has a more direct involvement with the Time's Child, which could still explain all these earlier incarnations. But it's just strange to me that for a show that was like trying to use the Matrix, a famously unreliable narrative device, yeah. to drop a huge revelation, it seems convenient for me i'm not necessarily saying that that's the route they'll take it on that i just think it's odd to learn a revelations from the master and we're supposed to take it straight up at straight value face value in a device that's famous for being wrong or being hacked or manipulated and with no evidence and we're just like oh yeah, yeah that's that's the truth now oh yeah but you are meant to take it as gospel aren't but you? that's what i'm saying it's an odd device to yeah. do it and yeah, also what it, agree on that one, yeah. what, what it is we were saying earlier you know like in Star Wars, there's a huge difference, for example, like in Star Wars, episode five, Luke and Vader in a lightsaber battle, and he's like, you know, you killed, I'm paraphrasing here, you'll know the exact line, but he says something, doesn't he, to the effect of, no, you ki- no but you killed father. my father, right? Yeah. So it's an, it's an exclamation, and then because he's exclaimed that, Vader goes, no, I am your father. So there's a, there's a motivation for him telling him, because Luke's like, you know, he may have fought in theory, you know, oh, you know, uh, maybe uh, Luke might, you know, have been given this information or whatever. But there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a motivation from character. Mm. There's a motivation from plot for that revelation to take place in the there and there, and it's in the heat of the moment. This is like the rise of Skywalker. A character just walks over and goes, "Here is exposition yeah. dump," and then what, what does it have to do with anything? I'm, j- I'm just so sick of chosen ones and adding this texture to characters that doesn't need to be there and also kind of misusing the chosen one sort of archetype yeah, as a tri- I agree with that, yeah. you know like like star wars does it so well both with luke and anakin when luke finds out that he's anakin's son it's interesting because he thought he was this random farm boy that came from nothing who could be something great and then what he actually finds out is the worst thing he could possibly hear, which is you're from this dynasty of evil and you're actually, you know, tied to the worst man in the galaxy. And, and you know, that kind of that, that, that potential for evil, you know, destruction lives in you. And then Anakin, you know, he gets told he's the chosen one, he's going to bring balance to the force. He gets all this like, you know, this um, expectation put upon him and then he fucks it all up. He lets Palpatine rise to power, you know, he might end the Clone Wars, but he starts something even worse, he starts the Empire, and then for years and years and years, he, you know, goes about the galaxy, seeing people get, you know, subjugated and tortured and killed, so he completely screws up the idea of being a Chosen One, so again, that's interesting, because you're expecting the Chosen One 
to fulfill the prophecy, right? Mm. And then it's only at the last possible moment in the story, which is, you know, the most significant moment in Star Wars ever, that, no, he does fulfill the prophecy, but it's not because of the prophecy itself. It's because he sees his own son in front of him dying, and he decides, no, enough is enough. And that's a character motivation, isn't it? It's a, it's a choice that he makes, not as the chosen one. He makes it as a father, and that's why that's so interesting. And... I think people see something like Star Wars where there's this chosen one narrative and they completely misread it and then they go, oh, well, what I need in my narrative is for the character to find out that they're part of this big grand scheme. And that's exactly what's happened with The Timeless Child. You're going to utterly hate me for this, but that's very similar to also the Harry Potter franchise in a sense where Harry yeah. is literally yeah, a random kid. And what happens is someone read, sort of misreads a prophecy and misinterprets it and goes, I'll kill the chosen one before he actually becomes the chosen one. Mm. And in doing that, creates a chosen one. And then this ordinary person who isn't phenomenal has this like expectation mm. that they will be phenomenal thrown upon them. And the narrative every time hits you home with, no, they are actually just ordinary. It's just everyone around them keeps going, whoa, you're amazing. And they're just like, well, well actually, no, yeah. I'm not. And the only real thing they have is that they happen to be in a place at the right time and that's why that franchise works and all these franchises with chosen ones it's always circumvented frodo in lord of the rings is the chosen one but the mm. only reason he successfully gets to mount doom is because sam wise decides i'm going to stick by the chosen one and sam facilitates pretty much the entire journey yeah. for him and frodo does bugger all in that franchise and it always <laughs> but all those chosen all those chosen one the one narratives that work always have that kind of component to it where there's a there's a twist to the element of them being chosen it's never yeah. just yeah. they're really important harry i'm curious because you obviously we are quite strongly na negative here mm. what were your kind of like unfiltered thoughts on it then generally i'm just curious as someone who you really start didn't like it. from the twist and then maybe work outwards because i'm well, interested to see like a 50 50 version here's what i did like about the twist i like uh the conflict that it made within the master i think it made it more interesting that he had something uh inside of him that was f from the doctor okay. and that's ultimately led him to become so angry and that's what's led him to be uh, lesser than the doctor do you think i that's think what that's led what led him to be less than the doctor well i mean isn't that kind of what what's implied that because she is somewhat the chosen one now and she is somewhat of the better of them like i don't want to piss on your chips <laughs> I, I just i have to just dis disagree no, that's fine that's I, fine you know i but can I, see uh, what you're yeah. kind of saying though are you saying that less that it motivated the master <clears throat> to become evil to begin with but the master has always fought themselves as the ultimate time lord in a sense and that's why they're yeah. like haha i'm the master and then by kind of i can see and, and that he, he being finds like, oh, out it's because of this sort of genetic but would it not of... have been more interesting because, yeah, okay, he thinks he's the ultimate Time Lord, but we all know really deep down the Master knows he's not as good as the Doctor. Wouldn't well, no, but that, that's what's good about it. He knows now that it's because of this thing. But wouldn't it have been more interesting for him to have found out... I mean, I still think this is shit, but wouldn't it have been more interesting for him to find out that he was the Timeless Child? Because it's like, all these years, he's been acting up and being a little well, Maybe, cunt. actually, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, actually. but because... Yeah. He's always felt inferior, and actually all it took was for someone to show him, oh no, actually you are this special person, you are this chosen one, you have been all along, and you know, maybe I didn't need to act up all those years, maybe everything I knew was a lie. Would that not have been more interesting? And then the, it would change the relationship between the Doctor and the Master, wouldn't it? Whereas yeah. what we actually get in the episode is the exact same relationship. He still feels inferior to the Doctor. Yeah, but I, well, I mean... Yeah, no, you're... Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, Matt. <laughs> You've swayed me. Tips for Dora. <laughs> the, um... While you studied women, I studied the blade. <laughs> what's, so, what's so annoying, though, is that I do think in this episode, again, knockout performance with what he had to work with. Oh, yeah. Like, this... The, like, the, Sesh Dewan is, is shaping up to be one of, you know, a great master. Mm. And it's so infuriating that he's going to have to work with this hokum. He's Sasha De one for me. <laughs> but he, he is great. He's genuinely menacing. I love that he feels... He feels almost the most, since Delgado, like an anti-doctor. Yeah, like, he's like, properly like, nasty again, isn't he? Like, I liked Missy, yeah. but she sort of had a bit of a tinge of River Song, a bit of like an anti-hero vibe yeah. going through. Whereas he he actually, like, he threatens to execute people on the spot, doesn't he? Like, he, he pulls the Doctor left, right, yeah, and And he has this dynamism and this theatricality that Missy had. But in a different way. This is like Jodie Whittaker runs around going, oh, brilliant, oh, brilliant. And Sasha Dewan runs around going, oh, destruction kind of thing. It is like 
Delgado and Pertwee are like the same person, but just their motivations flipped. Yeah. And I think it's so, such an interesting idea to have the master. Because I've never been a huge fan of the Sim Master, because I think he goes a bit OTT, but I almost think, weirdly, this incarnation of the Master's ott works well because they're like a brat. And that's what I didn't quite get from Sim ever. I feel like this this is like a scorned child interpretation mm. of the Master, where they're just like, oh, I'm really annoyed that everyone's paying attention to the Doctor. But what I, I always that. kind of got from Sim, and the reason why I think it's less bratty, is there's kind of like a revelry to him in the fact that they're the last two left. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he doesn't, he doesn't have to act up for the Time Lords anymore. It's like, we're the last rock stars. So I think he feels a bit validated in the fact that it's just me and the Doctor. It was always going to be me and the Doctor. And now I'm, in essence, just as good as the Doctor because we're, we're one of two. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, anyway, that was what I got from it. Maybe I'm completely wrong. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, um, you are. <laughs> what else did you like, Harry? I'm, I'm, I'm dying to know. We got you on the podcast um, for a reason. We've just been waffling. I, I really liked the Cyber Time Lords. I know that you are not <laughs> a fan, but I thought when that ha- when that reveal happened, I was like, oh, that's actually pretty awesome. But do you once... think it's a bit fan ficky though. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, you need something interesting. Like, you need something interesting like that to happen, and. Um, my to to agree with you though, I feel like the last ten minutes was kind of wrapped up really quickly, and I feel like it really shat on the Cyber Time Lord. Although they need like, a new I name. Feel like that's if you're terrible. Gonna create, was it Cyber Masters? Oh, Cyber then Masters. Sorry. Don't blow them up ten minutes later. Like they should yeah, no. be the prevailing vir- villains in Series Thirteen or something. Should they not? Um, I feel like half, there was halfway through the episode. I think just when they got revealed, I felt like that should have been the first parter. And then, yeah, the, because they they got no time at all. They were like really threatening, but we never got to see them be threatening. You know what? That would have been a really cool cliffhanger for. We said at the end yeah. the cliffhanger to Ascension of the Cybermen was quite weak because there's nothing that actually you went, oh my god, mm. at the end. As campy as I found them, if the master had have stepped out of the boundary with four Cyber Time Lords and been like, hello, Doctor, you would have gone, what? Yeah, no, yeah. No. For better I, or for worse, you would have gone. Oh well, my god! To, I want to see what you, Earth happened. To be honest with you, I was kind of like that anyway. But yeah, that when they didn't really do anything, I was just really disappointed. It bothers um, me yeah. because the master turning up takes the lone Cyberman out of the equation, and like I thought, he was shaping up to be a really interesting villain. As soon as the master comes in, he becomes number two, and then he just gets murdered really easily. And then it's it's the master show again. And, and, and his story of, doesn't really make sense no, anyway. But in terms of the actual structure of the story. Could you not have had uh, the lone Cyberman come to Gallifrey with the Doctor? He finds all the dead bodies that we know the Master left in his way. Because the Master doesn't actually need to appear in the story. The lone Cyberman gets the bright idea to use Time Lord bodies to create this new race of ultimate Cybermen. And then also, while the lone Cyberman's looking around on Gallifrey to do this, maybe he goes into the Matrix in this episode, and then he says to the Doctor, Oh, I found this thing out about you. And then he could have still remained the main villain of this finale, and it doesn't actually clash with what the Master says in the opening episode of, like, I found this thing, because she could have been like, oh, what you found, Lone Cyberman, is the thing I was told the Master found, and he wouldn't tell me what it is, but you can tell me what it is. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Thinking yeah. I actually, there is a weird moral in this story. Just, I don't know why, I, it just drew my attention when I was thinking about the Cybermen blowing up. So... This finale... They dropped a mixtape and they've been blown up, so... <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think this finale, as much as it's like, whoa, we've never seen this before, has some moments that are extremely derivative of other finales. The most criminal being, a being that's elevated themselves to a new god, stood in front of the Doctor while the Doctor has a button that can wipe all life out, and them going, go on then, Doctor, do it. And then them going, no, I can't. You know, coward any day in parting of ways. And now we've got this again with Jodie Whittaker thing, with the it? bottom right. Yeah. Jodie Whittaker's whole dilemma is, I don't want to destroy this race, right? That, that's mm. it. Like, we're so, Is anyone disagreeing with me on this? Or did I mis- misunderstand that, right? No, I can't kill the Master, right? I can't kill the Master and these Cybermen, mm. or whatever. She And I can't wipe out the organic life on mm. this sphere. I can't blow up by Gallifrey. Koshamas turns up, says... I'm so shocked you remember the name. Yeah, no, so am I. I just remember it. That's the old, you. That, the old dude, right? So stupid. Yeah. You know I've got good memory, uh, infamously. I know, but for uh, those shitty fanfic <laughs> names, so, <laughs> that's even the level I didn't know you were capable of. And Co- so Coach Armist turns up and goes to the Doctor. Don't worry, Doctor, I'll do it. And the Doctor goes, all right, and walks off. So really, the Doctor's conundrum wasn't, I don't want to blow up all this new organic life. The Doctor's conundrum was, I don't want to kill myself. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. How stupid. And like the whole thing with Christopher Eccleston is, is... 
Doctor, are you capable of committing genocide? The Doctor, no, coward any day. And then the Doctor goes, in fact, they pretty much rip this it's line because the line alpha from wave is going to destroy the Earth as well, isn't it? It is. So it's a conundrum but in terms of, do I, do I save the universe by killing half of the human race? But this is just, as you say, yeah. do I kill myself? Yeah. yeah, that's what it comes down to. But they play it like the part of Wave Dawns. Even down to, doesn't, you know, the, um, doesn't the D- Dalek Emperor in part of Wave say something to the effect of, because of your weakness, humanity will become the new Daleks or something. And then the Master says, literally, I think, verbatim, because of your weakness and something to do with the mm. cyber army, the world will become mechanised or something. I'm like, this is so <clears throat> painfully derivative of the nice we've seen before, let alone the surface level it's a master story with the Cybermen where the Cybermen start out as primary antagonists and become secondary antagonists in the second part, which we've now seen three times. And and like and now we've got this now we've got these other bits that are pasted together. I just don't understand what the moral of it all is. I know it's a bit hokey, but like when you tell a story the, a lot of the time, with a, st- with a good story, there's a thesis, there's something, there's an idea you're trying to convey. It doesn't have to be an incredibly intelligent idea, right? Like, mm. Fast and Furious 7, right? <coughs> it's an action movie, but really, it's about family, right? And it's about loyalty, and it's about ties, as much as it's about, you know, a car going out of a building. You know, cheesy mm. movies still have a message. What on earth was this story actually trying to tell? What was the story that Chibnall wanted to tell with this? Yeah, what did he want to the say theme? about the characters? What's the... What's the conflict? It's about nothing. And that's the fundamental issue with this story. It's about nothing. Mm. All it's about is getting people on Twitter going, oh my God, I didn't think of that. And quite frankly, I think... Oh my God, this Doctor is canon. Yeah. Like, canon is ultimately, in any franchise, very loose. And it's at the whim of whoever is in charge. And, you know, as we've seen with, like, Disney taking over Star Wars, canon can be wiped away like that. Mm. So canon doesn't really ultimately mean anything. And to, and to sit there and be like, oh, this thing I care about, like, they've added a bit more canon to it. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, just, doesn't bring anything interesting to the narrative. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. Just as a PSA as well, if Chris Chibnall is listening... If I ever get my hands anywhere near that show, <laughs> everything you say, like, yeah. on your neck. No, no. <laughs> Every, if I ever get my hands on that show, everything you've ever done will be erased. <laughs> oh my I God. want you to know that oh from me. God. Everything that you've Jesus. done in this finale, I don't care how. Cra- if I have to do episode one and someone wakes up from a dream, I will do it to get rid of this. But Not because I care about the canon, because I care. You know, I don't give a crap about the canon. The Doctor Who's got a loose and flexible canon, but it's the principle of thinking that you can just kind of add all this random stuff in and go, whoa, I'm so clever. And ultimately, Mm. it's been done, in my opinion, as an act of hubris. I think it's been done as a means by which Series 11, if we have another, say, 50 years of Doctor Who, Chibnall series would have gone down as extremely unremarkable. No one cares. It would have been one of those series of the show that people just go, oh, that was that era when it was all right, or it wasn't that good. And now, forever... We're going to talk about this, and it's yeah. so frustrating because it's mediocre. And we're not going to talk about it. We'll talk about it because it's good or bad, and we'll argue over it, but it's not good ideas. Moffat did some absolutely stupid balls to the wall things, but props to him for always thinking, how does this affect my yeah. character? He brought Gallifrey back because he thought, now this is about the journey. He did these. But the 50th, yeah, they bring Gallifrey back, but it's all rooted in character, isn't it? It's. John Hurt standing there going, you know, it's the privilege of lesser men to light the flame. And, you know, maybe I'll be this great man one day, but I've got this horrible thing now. And he's like, he's like hovering over the button. He doesn't want to do it. And there's that great moment where the moment says, you know, you hear that sound, Doctor. It, it brings hope to anyone in the galaxy, even you. And then he turns around and those Doctors are there and like, he's going to do it with them together. And it's, like, it's a potent emotional moment. And even though it's ultimately about law and it's about bringing Gallifrey back, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still about the story. And what's brilliant about it as well is that double whammy tragedy of the fact that when they leave, all of them are going to forget they did it, except the 11th Doctor. And that's so powerful because you know that the 9th Doctor is still going to go around with all that rage and all that regret. And you know what as well? It doesn't cheapen the fact that the 9th Doctor still learns to be a good person. It Mm. It doesn't go to you oh, well, the Ninth Doctor just suddenly goes, oh, actually, everything's fantastic. It doesn't, because John Hurt just goes, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. it didn't happen. Because to John Hurt, what he did happen, and that's the issue here, Jodie Whittaker's exactly the same. All the other incarnations are exactly the same. There is nothing new on Earth. It's cheap, it's lazy. It's the antithesis of the time war being added to canon. When you go from the TV movie to when they brought Doctor Who back in 2005, you know, RTD decided to add in the time war and that became the thrust that gave the show new life for another 
10 15 years to where we are now and and that that was a stroke of genius because it gave the doctor you know it gave the doctor ptsd it gave the doctor you know this kind of like survivor's guilt he became the last of the time lords you know we got all this texture on his relationship to the daleks it 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 gave him so much that he could talk about to all his companions you know it, it wasn't just for a cheap shock was it the time war was something that was built in it was baked into the story so that we could mine it for all this interesting detail um whereas this is just slap my hands on my cheeks oh my god the timeless child is the doctor like oh do you think we're going to get the mileage that we got out of the time war i don't think so no that, that's what i i'm worried about particularly um the, 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 what i was positive about is how it would eventually maybe lead to new stories but yeah i'm not too sure whether it will be what we want it seems um, like it's for the shock doesn't it? it doesn't seem like it's chibnall going how can we sustain the show in a fresh direction i've, I've seen a lot of people but, praise it as well as quote opening up the universe because now you know there's an alternative dimension but it's like there's billions of planets yeah well, what does it matter about having an alternative but also dimension? we already had an alternate dimension exactly. anyway so well, that's i don't get yeah. the argument as well that it opens us up to loads more doctors it's like well it's a show about time travel. There could be future doctors we could meet or, you know, like if you want more doctors that are women or if you want doctors that are people of colour, we can do that going forward. You know, it's not about where we came from. You know, yeah, the doctor's always been a white male up until very recently. Uh, but, you know, if we want to make sure that there's a wide spectrum of people that inhabit the doctor, then when we go to the 14th doctor, we can address that and the 15th doctor and so on and so on. We don't need to retroactively go back and say and it you know, worries me this people... is a cheap way of not having a doing this with the 14th 15th doctor by just yeah, going oh wait, it was a load of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right, cheap yeah. isn't it it's cheap oh, but you got your, pers- you got your person of colour in roof right so now we can cast a white, a white man, man again, again. Yeah, oh, yeah oh damn I didn't think about that it's, it's just That's, uh, it's just weird you know like, like it, it, again it's always in the now you know like casting Jodie Whittaker as the doctor was a was an exciting step forward for Doctor Who in the now <laughs> um casting Sasha Dewan, you know, as the first master who's a person of colour is an exciting step forward in the now. That's something that happened that was revealed in Spyfall when we had a lot of hope for this season. I think I think that touches upon another thing that's upset me about this is I feel mugged off twice, you know? <laughs> because I well, it's true though, isn't it? Because I when 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 Christian Bruno was announced, I thought He's done some bad stories. I don't trust him. This is gonna be terrible. And you thought the same question. Can didn't I you? can I just say, please tell them what happened when Chris Chibnall was announced, how you found out about it. <laughs> well, uh, Chris and a couple of our buddies were on a night out at uni and I decided not to go out that night and he rang me up drunk mid-kebab to tell me that Chris Chibnall had been announced to show her and I was like, oh, fuck off. No, it's like, you, were like, oh, good, you were like, oh, good one, mate. Who is it? And I was like, no, mate, mate, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> I was like drunk Chris and really angry. Chibnall. Um, and you were like, no, 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 good one. I was like, mate, get your computer up. Yeah. <laughs> I said you on the phone go, oh, no. <laughs> Um, I was just like, oh, I know. <laughs> and, but, 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 you know, you, you slowly drum up confidence, don't you? You know, as things start to get 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 teased out and, you know, you see the trailers for the, the first Chibnall series, you're like, oh, maybe it will be good. And then, of course, it wasn't. It was really disappointing. And then... Really bad. Yeah, it came round again this time. And, you know, to be fair, to, be, to my credit, <laughs> um, I didn't think it would be much better because it was the same creative team. It was a lot better. And they addressed a lot of the problems from last season. You know, the Doctor had some darkness restored to their character. We got more interesting concepts. We got, you know, an attempt at an arc. And it felt like it was all a push in the right direction. But now I feel like there's still been some good episodes this season. It's definitely been a better season than last year. But it's been undone somewhat by this terrible twist. Because stuff like Fugitive of the Jadoon, it, you know, what does that mean now as an episode? What does Spyfall kind of mean as a pair of episodes? What even does um, the Shelley episode and last week's episode mean? Because now we know that Lone Cyberman just gets killed off. And his, his kind of, his interesting idea that the pain is what makes Cybermen great has just been tossed aside completely. So all of that stuff kind of falls flat now as well. Like... What, what what was the point of this 10 weeks? Harry, I defer to you. In your infinite wisdom, You're please. meant to enjoy watching it, Matt. It doesn't oh. sound like you Well, there is the been. first fly in the ointment. <laughs> you know what? It's so arc... I think that's the issue. Is It's so arc heavy, right? This is like watching a series of... Not, not remotely qualitatively, but this is like watching a series of Breaking Bad. And then... Obviously, it's one long story, and the payoff's just rubbish. You're a bit like... It's like how you guys both felt about Game of Thrones, right? 
Do you not feel like the magic of Game of Thrones is slightly undone by the fact that everything that you were building towards yes. just ends in this absolute clusterfuck? It's the exact so same the thing with Rise of Skywalker. It's like, I like The Force Awakens a lot, love The Last Jedi, but those films are now always forever tarnished by the fact that it all boiled down oh, to the, you know, to, to Rey being a Palpatine and Palpatine coming back and him overshadowing Kylo Ren and Kylo Ren getting this empty redemption, which is a carbon copy of Anakin and, you know, Finn not getting an arc, which sees him liberate the stormtroopers and Poe Dameron getting nothing to do. And, you know, it's just like, Fuck ah, it! why are all these things <laughs> just getting worse? Wait, mate, I just had an easy solution. You know what's really weird about this week's episode? Mm. That like it didn't air, and the BBC just announced that like that series twelve weird. had been cut short to that nine episodes. Was weird. You know, that's what really I think weird. Strange that um, they decided to end um, a lot of things I cared about in twenty seventeen. Both Doctor Who ended at series ten, and <laughs> Star Wars ended at the Last Jedi. And you know what? <laughs> there were some highs, there were some lows, but I think it definitely ended on a strong note overall for both. Don't you think? Yeah, I, I think I do so. miss them. <laughs> But, um, and, you know, part of me would like to see more material from those franchises, but another part of me would worry that they might fuck it up. Mm. And I, wouldn't, I don't think I could bear the thought of, like, a terrible uh, sequel to I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Oh, I wouldn't. I'd, uh, I'd, be, uh, I'd be hopping out of that balcony right now. <laughs> I, think you've got to think, I think you've got to think as well is that series um, 10 obviously ended on a bit of a cliffhanger with the Doctor regenerating, but, you know, survival, you know, that didn't really end the classic who, so maybe mm. when it gets revived again... You know, we can leap right back into the yeah. adventures with something new and interesting. Harry, mm. Chris Terrio, Chris Chibnall, Chris Fulcell, fuck Marry Avoid. <laughs> uh. Well, gonna marry my boy Chris over here. Thank of you course, very much. Of Damn. course, of course. <laughs> if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. But, um. Hmm. So I have to fucking kill. That is the choice. Mm, yeah. yeah. You know what? I'll I'm going to be your... honest. No, I, I've decided it's Terrio kill. Terrio because... kill. Well, because you've got to think about it. It's Batman and Superman less... as well, right? So, you know. Oh, that's true. He did ruin the and ECU for Just to make this less yeah. violent, should we say a raise? You know, just get rid of. They, just, they, 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 they didn't. Oh, exist. in case okay. we get sued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, fuck, marry, shake your fist at them. Okay. So aggressively. I, I, I well, not, shake, not too aggressively, though. I'd shake my fist at Terrio, you know. Oh. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. And then um, I would definitely wine and dine and fuck Mr. Chibnall. <laughs> <laughs> and convince, oh. him to make a, convince him to make a better series. Uh, what yes. do you think of my dinosaur on this spaceship? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what? You know what? I'm willing... I'm, I'm already getting a bit excited for series 13. I can't even say it seriously. <laughs> if you're going to fuck Chris Chibnall, could I join in and then it's the power of three? <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, he's going to oh. torch my wood. <laughs> uh, cold blood. Did I? Did I do it? Did I do it right? Did that, did that work? Uh, yeah, that was sick, mate. That Thanks, was mate. Fan dabby dozy. Um, um, I think... Just to sort of wrap up um, on this. There's nothing about what transpired in this episode mm. that gives me any excitement. I'm not going to sit here and go, I won't watch it again. You know, the next episode, you know, it'll be a Dalek story. I'm sure it'll be decent. The last time, Chibnall of the Dalek story, got to admit, I liked some of the interesting ideas and new innovations he came up with the yeah. Daleks. Ultimately, though, there's nothing about this series that's made me think anything beyond. I'm already tired of Chibnall's vision of the show, and I was after series 11. And you know what? Going forward, there's not even anything new like, oh, there might be a new Doctor or a new companion. We're just going to get the same thing in Series 13. Yeah. As much as we got something different in Series 12, I was thinking at these same fundamental issues in that there's weak characters. The plots don't ultimately follow through. Mm. There's last-minute expositional get-outs of impossible situations. Like, there's a, the, it's rife with Deus Ex Machina. And ultimately, like... It's just not an exciting show to watch at the moment. As much as I've enjoyed a lot of these episodes, it's not it's not come close to the RTD years or the Moffat years. And I, I'm just waiting for the next showrunner. And that's how I felt at the end of Series 11. Mm. And this is how I feel at the end of Series 12. Well, if we get to the next showrunner. Um, I know you were joking earlier, well, 50% joking, when you said, uh, Chip and I, I'd, I'd retcon whatever you do if I ever had control of the show. But I think what we need to remember is, at one point, you know... Brain and Morbius established there were more Doctors and then suddenly there was a regeneration limit and also at one point the Doctor was half human on his mother's side and then at the end of the series 4 finale we established that 
David Tennant becoming a half human doctor is like a new big deal, therefore retconning that. So there will one day be a showrunner who disagrees with all of this, who will probably retcon it, or it will be a throwaway line, or we might not ever hear about the Timeless Child ever again, and we can all just forget it happened. And, and Doctor Who's always had this kind of malleable Play-Doh continuity. As much as oh, it upsets yeah. me that the Timeless Child has become the Doctor, and now the Doctor is this weird mythic figure, and you know, not only did they destroy all the Timeless and Daleks, they also happen to be the patient zero for regeneration, you know? Like, it could be easily shit. retconned. It can be easily retconned, or it can easily be forgotten like, about. We, we have no idea where she's come from, we could find out more things about that, and that could potentially I'd rather go just, back on it. just left it, you know? Just just give give us some new, new exciting stories. But having said that, um, I probably will watch the next season, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a diehard Lifelong Doc 2 fan, but I, I, um, I've got even less hype now, and it's starting to me to get to the feeling where I would like it to go away for a bit, as much as I love it, um, because I think what it really, really needs now is a proper, proper breath of fresh air. And I think the only way you could do that is if it goes off the air for five years, ten years, and then comes back and, and, it, and we all get that excitement again because, you know, it, it's just it's lacking. It's gone for me. The spark's gone. I completely agree. I I have made a suggestion once or twice. I don't know if you guys remember, but I would be happy to see it sold to someone else. What do you think about that? If that did happen. So let's say it went off air for like 10 years and then got bought by Netflix or something. But I, but I trust that the BBC can do something with it. And I do think, you know, Piers Wengner, he said recently, it's in no danger of being cancelled. I just think the format of the show needs to be shaken up a bit. I think but it's BBC, become so can do formula. That. I know, but it hasn't really changed. I think it's so formula, and it, I, I well, would you, like to see it shaken up. You got to remember that the classic, and then it went away for fifteen years. And yeah. The beast that we got after that was so radically yeah, it's, different. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like it's you true. know, we could we could battle Star Galactica. It in a sense, you could take it off air for five ten years, and it comes back, mm. and it's basically a different show. Yeah, and I would love to see it be a bit more like Sherlock, and just maybe if we got if if you got. Three incredibly high quality, four high quality. And you said this before, right. man. Yeah, Early Sherlock. Sherlock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Minute, yeah. Ninety minute episodes, to, or two parters, or do something like Children of Birth and do you know a series that's a one week event yeah. and it's all one story. I would, I, mean, I would. We've wanted something take, like that for yeah, so long, no, now, haven't so, we? Yeah, yeah, I'd happily take that because I, I think ultimately, as much as I'd like to see three amazing ninety minute standalones. Really, I think what sells this show always is the is the cliffhanger. Oh my god, hearts. Harry, you've got your face on your socks. I've just realised, and your girlfriend's. Uh, yes, <laughs> and Nutella. <laughs> did she get those for you? Uh, she did. Yes. Oh, I think my it says um, I'm nutty about you. I also have uh, underpants <laughs> versions as well. Do you? I do. Yeah. Oh, can we see? I can't. So no, obviously, not on. <laughs> I haven't got oh, matching right. for you, darling. So you've got no underwear on at all. <laughs> I think I'm not wearing note, anything. I think on that note, then we're going to check out. Um, Harry's uh, underwear. Um, obviously, this is a family-friendly podcast. Um, so until next, <laughs> um, I guess we at uh, this moment we'll say thank you for uh, uh, coming down, Harry. Uh, That's today. all right. Any time, any time, any time. And yeah, uh, once we check pleasure. out this sweet underwear, um, oh. should we say to people, stay milky and uh, tune in next week? I don't think we should. Um, although um, I tell you what, we should do. We should plug the socials because we always forget to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find us on um, Twitter at Full Fat Videos. You can find us on Instagram at full underscore fat underscore videos. You can find us on Bevo at Big Boy 69 at Full Fat Videos. Don't give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time then. Cheer a chocolate rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Cheer a chocolate rain.